Hello YouTube, my name is Josh and I want to welcome you to our channel. So Flickstick is all about game streaming and cloud gaming and today we're here to talk about Microsoft Azure. So we recently created a guide for setting up a standard server for Microsoft Azure and it's a great gaming system, very powerful and it's available in a lot of places. So those are all really good things. The downside is that a standard server with Azure can cost around $3 per hour, which is really expensive. So a lot of you have approached us and said, hey, is there an option to play this for less? Can we get into this cheaper? And the answer is yes, there absolutely is. And that's what this video is going to cover. So let's talk about the concept. You can set up something called a low priority server with Microsoft Azure, and it can save you as much as 60% compared to the cost of the standard server. And that's a big deal, that's a big savings. So we're gonna go through that step by step. Now we do wanna give credit where credit is due. Um, this method is developed by a gentleman on Reddit called eCalder6. So we want to give a shout out to him and say thank you for this guide and for these scripts that we're going to be using. And with that said, let's talk about the downsides of using this. So one downside is that it's really exactly like it sounds. Low priority means that you could have your session disconnected kind of at random. So you, you might have to reconnect to your server. And in some cases, you may have to rebuild your server again if they decide to suck your resources back into the system. So if they want to recover the resources that your server was using, they technically have the option to do so. Now, after talking to people that are already doing this, it doesn't seem like these things happen super often, so it may be worth the risk if you're trying to stay on a budget, but be aware that that possibility exists. Now, what you're gonna see next is the very beginning of setting up a Microsoft Azure server, and that's gonna be setting up your account and just getting into the Azure portal. This is gonna look identical to what we covered in the first video, and then we're gonna talk about the new things after that. To begin, click the Getting Started link in the description. It'll take you to this page right here, and it's gonna prompt you to sign in if you have an existing Microsoft account. If you don't have one, go ahead and create one. I have one, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. All right, so it's gonna let us know that we don't have any subscriptions yet. So let's go ahead and manage subscriptions. All right, it's gonna ask me uh, basically which account I wanna use. All right, and so it tells you at the top that you could get started with a free trial. That's not appropriate for what we're doing because we need to have a GPU on our cloud so go ahead and fill out the information below. After filling in your information, it's gonna have you verify your identity in two different ways. It's gonna have you verify your phone number first, and then it's gonna have you enter your credit card number. This is the credit card that will be charged for your Azure account. So go ahead and fill that out appropriately and hit next when you're ready. After you've finished entering your payment information, it's gonna ask you to accept Microsoft's agreement. I'd encourage you to go ahead and read each of these agreement details, and when you're ready, click the Agree button and then choose to sign up. On the next screen, it's going to basically ask you what type of subscription you'd like to sign up for. We are signing up for a pay-as-you-go subscription, so go ahead and click Sign Up. You may be prompted to identify your phone number one more time. If it does ask you, go ahead and do that. When you hit next, it's going to show you that your payment information is already on file, and that's because we entered our payment when we set up our account. Go ahead and hit next. And then it's going to ask you if you want to add technical support to your subscription. We're going to say no, just to keep our cost under control, and then hit next. And then again, it's going to ask you to agree to a couple of different agreements. As soon as you're comfortable, check the box, and then hit sign up. As soon as you finish setting up your subscription, it's gonna take you to the Microsoft Azure dashboard to set up your cloud server. For our next step, you'll wanna go ahead and take a look at the description one more time, and you're gonna to wanna to open the link for products available by region. Now, the reason that we're doing this is to identify which servers you can use in your region for cloud gaming. And I'll show you an example of how you'd figure that out. So in the dropdown, you can choose your region from this list. In this example, we're gonna look at Asia and India because those are the two regions that are usually not serviced by other cloud gaming companies. And I know a lot of our audience uses these two regions. 
So make sure you check off any you know, your region basically from this list. And then when you scroll through the list, we're looking for the NV series, which is right down here, of servers. And if you look at this example, it looks like Southeast Asia and then Central India both support this type of server. So in the next step, you'll want to choose the server that supports the NV series. So just make a note of that. So for your region, identify which servers offer the NV series and then move on to the next step. After you've determined the best NV6 server location for your territory, go ahead and look in the description of this video. You're going to see a link to launch a script that will create the page that you're looking at in front of you. And we're going to go through this list together and fill it out so that it works for you. Now the very first thing on the list is the type of subscription that you're going to use. You can just leave it on pay as you go. For resource group, we're going to create a new one. Now I'm going to call mine cloud group. But you can really put whatever you want there. Now the location is really important. So in the previous step, you determine exactly which location supports an MV6 server in a region near you. You want to pick that here. So for me, it's US East, and I'm going to leave it on that. Now below, you get to customize some settings, and this is your access to the server that we're basically setting up. So you can create an admin username, password, um, script location, you're going to leave exactly the way it is. Network ID, you can leave blank. So let's go ahead and fill those out real quick. And then once you've filled those out, go ahead and click I agree to the terms and conditions as soon as you're ready, and then click pin to dashboard, and then choose purchase. Now at this point, it's going to take about 10 or 15 minutes to deploy your server. You'll notice that it shows that it's deploying right here. You'll also see a little status up here that shows that it's deploying. Give it about 10 or 15 minutes, and then it will notify you as soon as your server is ready. As soon as your template is finished deploying, take a look in the description again and you'll see a link for Azure resources. Go ahead and click it and you'll see the page that opens up right here. This is basically what we're working with. So on the left side of this window, expand subscriptions. And now this may take just a few extra seconds for you if you've never been here before and that's fine. Give it some time to finish. And then go ahead and open up resource groups. And then look for the name of the resource group that we created during our first setup steps. Now you'll notice that I've created several of them as I've worked through different servers. The one that we created for this video is the cloud group. So if you named it the same thing I did, go ahead and expand that. And then click on providers. From here, go down to Microsoft Compute. And then we're going to click on public IP address right here. On the right side of the window, you're going to see the IP address listed just like this. So it's going to say IP address and then it's going to give you a number. Go ahead and make a note of that number, so type it out, write it down somewhere, because we're going to use that in just a moment to connect to our server through the remote desktop app. From the desktop of your computer at home, go ahead and open up the remote desktop app. On this screen, go ahead and hit show more options, and then you're going to paste in the IP address that we identified in the resources step. For username, go ahead and put in the username that you created during our setup. And then you're welcome to check allow me to save credentials. And then go ahead and hit connect. From here, go ahead and put in the password that you, you created during server setup. And then hit OK. All right, it's going to yell at you about the certificate and the remote computer not being able to be verified. You're welcome to check Don't Ask Me Again for this connection and hit Yes. All right, the Windows Server Manager is now open. And we're going to make a couple quick changes just so that we don't have to mess with this program again and that it doesn't automatically open again for the server. And we're also going to enable full access to the browser so that we can download tools and, and uh, drivers and things like that. So start off by going to local server over here and let it go ahead and load everything up like it just did. And then go over to IE Enhanced Security Configuration. Click on where it says on and we're going to turn both of these options off. And that basically enables full access to the, to the browser. And from here go up to Manage, hit Server Manager Properties. And then check the box that says Do Not Start Server Manager Automatically at Login and hit OK. From here, you can go ahead and close it. Now we're going to go ahead and disable a couple quick things just to make this easy and make sure that things don't pop up while we're gaming. 
So to start things off, do a search, look for control panel. And then click it in the results. Now I like to view this by large icons just to break down the categories a little bit. From here, click on the Windows firewall. And then we're gonna turn it off. So turn wire the firewall on or off, turn off, turn off and then hit OK. Now we need to install the NVIDIA drivers for the graphic card on our cloud server. The easiest way to do this is to open up your web browser. You're going to visit flickstick.com and then click on the Microsoft Azure Cloud Gaming Tutorial. Um, if you need to go directly to it, there will be a link for it in the description below. And you'll see that this covers everything that we're doing in the video, so you're welcome to use this as a written reference if you're following along. So scroll on down and we're basically at step number eight right here. And it says install the NVIDIA drivers from this link. Now this is super important. This link is special. It's a driver that is required for this. You don't want to like search for this on your own and get it externally from this, you know, outside of this link. So go ahead and click the link. That's going to take us right to the page that we need to be at. Click download. Just hit skip down here. And then agree and download when you're comfortable. And then go ahead and save the driver. Now this will take just a minute to download, shouldn't take very long. And uh, this is just an important step that gets the, the graphics card inside of our cloud server running in the best way possible. So I'm going to skip ahead because it may take just a moment to download that product. All right, our download is complete. Go ahead and click Run. And you're welcome to go ahead and close the browser window at this point. Hit OK. It's going to extract the file and we'll go ahead and install it. All right, and then again, hit agree and continue when you're comfortable. We're gonna use the express installation and hit next. Now this may take a few minutes, so again, I'm gonna go ahead and cut ahead just for the sake of time. All right, our driver is installed. Now it's prompting you to restart the server, and we are going to go ahead and do that. So click restart now, and then your server will restart. It's gonna kick you out of the um, remote desktop app. And we want to wait about five minutes and then just open up the remote session one more time, just like we did before, to get back to the cloud desktop. All right, our server is back up, and we're going to go ahead and move into the next step, which is just configuring our monitors and our graphic adapters. So go ahead and do another search, and we're going to look for Device Manager. Go ahead and open it from this link. And we're going to go into expand the display adapters category. And then we're going to right click on Microsoft Hyper-V V video and then disable it. Go ahead and hit yes when you're prompted. And then go down here under monitors. And we're going to check because it shows that there's two monitors like virtual monitors connected to the server. We only want to keep the one that's connected to the Tesla M60. So if we click on this one and right click it, choose properties, it shows that it is on the Tesla M60. Now if we do that to the second one, go to Properties, shows that it's on a basic display adapter. That's the one that we're going to disable. So disable it right there. Same thing, hit yes. And then go ahead and close that window. Now we're ready to make a few changes to the registry. This is important because we need to disable the lock screen on this computer. Normally when we exit this remote desktop app, it locks the computer. And then if you try to connect to it with Parsec, it's not going to work. So we're going to disable that lock screen so that Parsec connects to it smoothly. So let's go ahead and do a search again. We're going to type in reg edit and then click on that link. From here you want to click on H key local machine and then go to software. From here go ahead and click on policies and then open Microsoft. And then you're going to go ahead and right click on Windows. Choose new and then key. It's going to have you name a key. We're going to call this personalization. And then just hit the enter key to save it. And then if we scroll down just a little bit, we're going to right click on the key that we created and then do new. And we're going to do a D word value. And we're going to call this one no lock screen. 
Now it's important to get the uppercase letters correct, so uppercase N, uppercase L, uppercase S, and then hit the Enter key, and then double click it, and we're gonna change this value data to a number one, and then hit OK, and then you're free to go ahead and close the registry editor. We're almost done with our setup, and we're ready to install Parsec. So go back to your browser, and we're gonna to go to parsecgaming.com. From here, click Download Now, and then choose the Windows 7 Plus 64-bit link, and then hit Save, and then hit Run. You're welcome to close the browser again. Now, it will ask you in a second if you want to enable controller support, and when it does, we're going to go ahead and hit yes, and then install. Now, it should automatically open Parsec by itself, like it's doing right now. And after it finishes loading, we're going to log in with our existing Parsec account. So this is the same account that we have installed on our machine back at home. And then hit log in. Go ahead and enable hosting. Now we're ready to make a few quick changes to Parsec just to get things working well. So click the gear and then open settings. We're going to go to network and then for server start port we're going to put in 8000. Click save. And then go over here to hosting and make sure that the display adapter is correct. So click on this drop down, make sure it says Tesla M60 here. So mine already does and that looks great. And you're welcome to go ahead and close Parsec at this point. And that's it for this virtual desktop. You can go ahead and close it down and we're ready to make a few changes to Parsec itself. So let's go ahead and go back to our dashboard with Microsoft Azure. So again, that's over at portal.azure.com in case you left that page. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and restart our server. So just, to, just so you know, in case you need to navigate here from scratch, normally you load up to the, the dashboard when you go to portal.azure.com, you can choose your cloud server from here. That gets us to this page and then we're gonna restart the server. After restarting your server, you're ready to go ahead and start Parsec on your home computer. So let's open up Parsec, and you should see your cloud gaming computer listed. It's probably gonna have a slightly different name than what mine has here. Now you will wanna make one quick adjustment before you start gaming. Go up to the gear and open settings, and then take a look at your bandwidth limit. So with this type of server, the speed that you connect with is a factor in how much it costs you. And you're going to want to choose between either 15 megabits per second or 30 megabits per second. So there is a big quality difference between the two, but both should be decent for gaming. So if you want to get the lowest price possible, go ahead and choose 15. If you want to bump it up just a little bit, go ahead and leave it on 30. And then let's go back to play and open up the cloud server. All right, cool, and we're connected. So you're basically ready to go ahead and start installing games and just enjoying that experience, but there is one quick thing that I wanna show you. So go down and click on the folder, and then click this PC. You'll notice that you have two different hard drives on the computer, there's a local C drive and then a temporary D drive. You're welcome to install games at either one of these locations, but be aware that if you install anything on the D drive, it'll get purged every time you restart the server. So you'll have to install those games again, so if you want to keep games on the computer, make sure you're choosing the C drive as long as you have enough space. Now if you need to use this, no problem with that at all. Just be aware that whatever you put on there has to be reinstalled the next time you boot up your server. Now there is one last thing that I want to show you, so let's take a look at your Azure portal. Open up your browser and head on over to portal.azure.com and you're going to see this page. And you'll notice that your server name is located either here or here. Click on it either place, either way is fine. And the main thing here is that you wanna make sure that when you're done gaming, that you deallocate your system. And that's the, the equivalent of shutting the thing down. And that's gonna stop your billing so that you don't pay for time that you're not actually gaming or using the system. So go ahead and click deallocate, hit yes. And that's gonna go ahead and shut down the machine. And like we talked about before, if you have anything saved to the D drive, that gets purged as part of this process. If you have things saved to the C drive, they'll be there the next time that you boot up. 
So let us know what you think about this video. Do you feel like the trade-offs are worth the pricing that you get? So are you okay with the chance of being disconnected or having to rebuild the server at some point? Now it is a lot easier, especially with the script that we ran. It really does save you a lot of time compared to the old way of doing it. So that's something to think about. You know, it's not quite as lengthy as it was before to try to get your server up and going. So worst case scenario, if you really did need to jump back into this and just kind of build it again, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal. So that's something to kind of weigh in on this. So how do you feel about that? Do you feel like this pricing is worth that possibility? Let us know in the comments. And as always, if you enjoy cloud gaming and you enjoy videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel. We release a lot of content like this and we make every effort to cover every major cloud gaming company. And that's it for this video. So my name's Josh and I hope that you guys have a good one.